So behind me is our Civic Type R, and we put some serious hard miles on this vehicle, and we did that for a reason. We knew there were some shortcomings, and we wanted to find them, and we wanted to address them. So let's take a look back at what we found and how we addressed it. These cars are known to have a cooling problem, so we wanted to address that, and we didn't want to make it worse when you installed the inner cooler. So we're playing with a couple different supplementary race rads and an oil cooler. So we've actually cut this down, did some testing, and then we welded this back on. There's no boost running through this right now, but still we wanted to mimic the actual height of the inner cooler. On once the front bumper's on, this goes all the way up. It actually doesn't let a lot of airflow go over the top of it to hit the cooling system. So we wanted to make sure we took a lot of tests and a lot of data on the cooling system, the oiling system, and the intercooling system to make sure all the temps are in check. So we're pulling off our prototype bracketry for the oil cooler for the CTR. We've done all the testing. We made this bracket so we could put a bunch of different types of coolers on here and test them out in the real world. Now we're gonna make the real bracket. Jason's scanning the area. He's gonna come up with something a lot prettier than this. So with the car being so new, we wanted to take all the OBD2 data that the ECU is seeing. We couldn't actually capture that on some of our data act systems. So this blue driver is what we've been using and it captures everything on the iPhone. All the channels that this car is spitting out, we can see and we could also send them off into an Excel spreadsheet and read it after we've driven the car and compare it to our AM AQ1 stuff. So we use this device while we're logging to see the global effect of the cooling system, all the factory parameters the ECU sees. Then we also have a plethora of sensors wired up in the car. So during a commute, we see all the real world conditions, bumper to bumper traffic and 90 degree heat. We see at speed on the highway. We see all these parameters. We save them, log them, and then digest them once we get back here. So any changes we make to the vehicle, we can measure. We do one change at a time. We come back and look at all the data, make sure what we're doing physically works with the computer. So we've installed a supplementary race ride on the vehicle and we've been testing it for a couple of weeks. With our inner core being so big, it's the biggest inner core we can fit up in the front and keep all the crash components and everything else. It does affect airflow to other components. So we wanted to make sure the cooling system was in top shape once the inner core went on. So we have a supplementary race rad behind the engine and it uses the factory scoop to draw air in, passes through it and then goes out underneath the car. It's been working really well. So we threw another ingredient into the mix and we put a 19 row stack plate oil core and the driver's side brake duct. So with that component in place, we're gonna test the entire cooling system and its global effect on what the oil core and the supplementary race rad have on the entire system. So our Civic Type R is back on our Dynapax. We are torture testing it. And why are we doing that? Because we're testing our oil cooler. When we took this car to the racetrack, we learned a lot of things. One, the oil gets wicked hot. And what we've done with our oil cooler, it's a couple of neat features. The bracket itself is designed as a bit of a funnel to help kind of catch that extra air and scoop it and utilize the factory air oil on this car and dump all that hot air into your wheel well so it goes right out the back of your car. We actually have thermal imaging of the airflow through the cooler, after the cooler, up over in the fender liner and out the factory vents. This particular package works with everything that's inside of your car. So all of the Mishimoto products that we offer work hand in hand with one another. They don't interfere, they don't get in each other's way. Plus, we're also testing the aux cooler in the back to help get those engine cooling temps down just a little bit lower. We've had a lot of interest in these additional cooling solutions for the CTR. So we decided to get these to market as soon as we could, do a short run production right here in our engineering facility. We water jetted our brackets and assembled our stainless steel braided lines with our Dash 10 AN fittings right in house. After powder coating, all other components, they were QC'd 
wrapped and boxed up. A short drive to our distribution facility means it's ready to ship right to your doorstep. So there you have it. If you're looking to keep your hot hatch a little bit cooler, we got you covered.